This video is one that you've been asking me for, for a long time. I'm Emma from Mmm English, here to share some very common, very Australian expressions with you. If you're living in Australia or planning to visit Australia in the future and plan to chat with some locals while you're here, you're going to have to learn some of the local slang expressions and get used to listening to an Australian English accent. If you don't already know, I'm from Australia, a very big, very beautiful island underneath you or to the east or the west of you. Now, my Australian English is an English teacher's version of Australian English. So I thought it would be useful to get some real Australian accents on here just to show you what it's like. So I've asked a few friends to think of some common Australian expressions that they use all the time and then try to explain them for you. It's going to seem like a bit of a random collection of expressions because I asked them to think of ones that they use, but they are super useful and they're used every day. Ready? Let me first introduce you to Ben. Now you've actually met Ben before in this video here. I often say, what are you doing the Savo? Which means, well, it's a compressed way of saying, what are you doing this afternoon? Thanks, Ben. That was a pretty good explanation. This afternoon is very often spoken by Australians as the Savo, or even Savo. Avo is used in spoken English only, and that goes for most of the expressions in this video. They're informal and they're mostly used in spoken English. And Australians like to shorten words as much as possible. Avo, avo, ambo, servo, barbie, sanger, kanga, blowy, footy, mozzy, bottler, and it just goes on and on. That's where avo comes from. And then there's the link between the words this and avo. And this happens all the time in spoken English for all native speakers who are speaking at a natural pace, no matter where they come from. Words that end in a consonant sound are often linked to the following word if it starts with a vowel sound. I'm a little hungry. I'm a. I'm a little hungry. Keep it together. Keep it together. Keep it together. So that's why this and avo sound like they're smashed together. This savo. This savo. The savo. The savo. The savo. We're having some mates round for a barbie savo. You should come. You can also hear avo on its own. I'll pick it up on Wednesday, avo. Let's move on. Uh, she'll be right. <laughs> when would I use she'll be right? Uh, Any time that something looks like it's going to go wrong or you're in doubt or uh, any yeah. uncertainty. Yes. And you're just like, nah, it'll be fine. But instead you just go, she'll be right. Mate, add mate. a mate on the end. Mate is like the extra convincer. It just reassures everyone. She'll that, be right, mate. Yeah, she'll be right. Like Jess said, this expression is used all the time when you're trying to convince yourself or someone else that everything will be okay. It's the equivalent of saying, don't worry about it, or it'll be fine. The car feels a little strange. I hope we don't have a flat tire. She'll be right. There's only 10 Ks to go. The trick with this expression is that she, as a pronoun, doesn't always refer to a woman or a girl. 
Most of the time, yes it does, but sometimes you'll hear people refer to objects as she. It's just something to keep in mind, particularly for this expression. Here, she is referring to the tire or even to the situation in general. So let's hear a few common ways that Australians talk positively about something. Here's Ali. I say um, either it'll be ace or I've had a ripper of a time. It's a great thing. If you have a ripper. A, yeah, a ripper. A ripper like, of a time, you've had a great Like it's, time. it's up here. Yeah. Like and a it, good time's probably here and a ripper of a time. And an ace time is like. Like yeah. maybe a little bit lower. Yeah. Okay, so all of these expressions are used to say that something is really great. Note that ace is an adjective. It could be used to describe people, things, experiences. Ripper can be an adjective too. I've had a ripper day. But it can also be used in this fixed expression as a noun. A ripper of a time. How was your trip? It was ace. We had a ripper of a time. We just hung out on the beach all day. Now, when Ali and Jess were using their hands to show how great these expressions were, they were explaining the degree of greatness. So according to them, a great time is here and an ace time is here and a ripper of a time is here. I guess that might be true. Australians, what do you think? Is a ripper better than ace? I think so. Meet Tom. Now, Tom is a tradesman and tradesmen work in trades. They build things and they fix things. Here in Australia, it's really common to hear the abbreviated names of these jobs, the shortened version because we Australians love to make words shorter. So out of all the tradies, which is a tradesman, tradies, you got your chippies, which is a carpenter, your sparkies, which is an electrician, you got your brickies, which are bricklayers. Did you get that? He's referring to people's jobs. A tradie is a tradesman. A chippy is a carpenter, someone who works with wood. A sparky is an electrician. A bricky is a bricklayer. Probably the other best part of the day is uh, when we knock off the finish, get on the piss, which is like you go have a beer. Knock off and get on the piss. Not distinctly Australian expressions there, but ones that you will definitely hear when you're speaking to Australians, unfortunately. Knock off is to finish work for the day. What time do you knock off? I'll knock off early so we can go to the cinema. To get or to be on the piss means to drink alcohol and usually quite a lot of it. One glass of wine is not getting on the piss. Drinking 10 beers is definitely on the piss. Now this is not really a pleasant way to describe this activity. It's very, very informal and used only amongst friends. But for goodness sakes, please don't tell your boss that that's what you're doing on a Tuesday night. Tell your boss you're meeting a friend for a drink. But then when you're talking to your friend, you could say, let's get on the piss. That would be letting them know that you were interested in drinking a lot that night. Where's Sam? It's Friday. He'll be on the piss with his mates. <sighs> Please don't tell anyone you learnt that from me. You learnt it from Tom. I've got a few mates who often chuck a sickie, which means uh, when you can't be bothered going to work, they pretend to be sick and they tell their boss well, they tell them I'm sick, but they're really chucking a sickie. Okay, this is a good one. Every Australian watching has definitely chucked a sickie, at least at some time in the past. And you might have done it as well. 
So this is when you tell your boss that you're unwell and that you need to take the day off work. But really, you just want to do something more fun, like go to the beach. Or maybe the night before you went out and you partied too hard and you can't be bothered. You feel lazy. So in Australian slang, you can say that you chucked a sickie. Your new friends here might try and convince you to go camping with them one long weekend. Come with us. You can just chuck a sickie on Monday. The weather is so good today. I think we'll just chuck a sickie and go to the beach. Also, check out how Ben said Australia. Not in Australia anyway. Not in Australia anyway. Not in Australia anyway. This is literally what Australia sounds like when Australians say it. Let's get back to the girls. Take it easy. Yeah. If you're too keen, too excited, what else, when else do you use it? Um, like if you um, just like I'm going to take it easy too yeah. much. But then you can also tell someone if they're like angry or like too like erratic. Step back. To say out. like, whoa, take it easy. Take it easy is not strictly Australian. You'll hear it said by lots of different native English speakers. But it does have a few different meanings, like Jess suggested. It can mean relax, to do nothing, just rest or chill out. What are you doing on the weekend? Nothing much, just taking it easy. Or it can mean calm down. So if someone is getting angry or upset or they're too energetic, then you can say, hey, take it easy, Sam. Stop yelling, tell me what's wrong. Okay, we're just gonna deal with the shrimp thing right now. You probably think that we say, chuck another shrimp on the barbie all the time. No. In Australia, this is not a shrimp. It's a prawn. We never say shrimp. You'll never hear an Australian say shrimp. But Barbie is slang for barbecue and you'll hear people say that all the time. Come round to our place for a Barbie on Sunday. That just means come round to our house for dinner, a dinner that we're cooking on the barbecue. So there you have it, a collection of Australian expressions by Australians. Thanks to all of my awesome Aussie mates who helped to make this video. That's just a little taste of the type of English that you can expect down here in Australia. Ha have a prawn off the barbie? <laughs> Check another prawn on the barbie? <laughs> yeah, cut to me. <laughs> well, <laughs> Often when I play cricket, I bowl a few rips snorters or a couple of ring-a-ding dingers. <laughs> yeah, I don't have to explain it. You have to have like the words come up. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, typical tradies day. I'm a chippy, you know, all the tradies. Get to work, smoke out, knock off, get on the piss. Take it easy, take it back yeah. a night, just wind it down a little bit. They just keep going. Yeah, but... I'm speaking <laughs> slang. Do you know what though? I reckon we nailed this. You did nail this. <laughs> you were, okay. It's going to be hard to... <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe and check out some of my other more serious English grammar lessons over there. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.